G'day guys, Matt here again, start of the week. Uh, yeah, we're just down here at the development block and we're just doing a couple of odd jobs. I think we're probably a day or two out from being able to uh, get onto the paddocks properly, still a bit wet. I guess the big news down here is we got Tiny 2 is getting new lugs welded on. So hopefully I'll be able to show you some of that in a bit. So yeah, these are all the, the lugs that are getting welded on to the grouser plates and you can see they come they're very heavy. So you can see they come all angled there ready. So they um yeah don't have to V them out thankfully. We got Peter here, he's the uh, the metal guru we got here, so he's um yeah in charge of getting these lugs welded onto the tracks here. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna get him to do a bit of an explanation what's happening here, because yeah, I won't make sense. So yeah, we'll um you'll hand it over to him. Hi there, Peter here. Jacko's asked me to come over and build up the grousers on the D11. From the factory, they're four inches, 100 mil high, and these are worn down to 40 mil. So, despite the tractor weighing 100 ton, it can't push. I mean, how much power you got, you've got to have plates. So, these are the bars, they're 60 mil high, and there's a V prep for welding. So, it's a matter of getting them aligned, and then we just fill the gap, taking the two or three passes, and it's done. We're using low hydrogen wire, Hobart Brothers, lovely wire, all position, good tensile, and it makes it easy. I've only got Lincoln gear, so I've got an LN25 and a Lincoln Vantage 580 multi process power source to run it all. So I'm running two welders at the moment, a wire feeder and a stick welder around the other side, and it's going well. So it's just a matter of building these back up. These are within a mil or two of original height. This tractor will then be able to push decent piles of dirt. That's what it's about. You can see nice and smooth that. So how many passes do you reckon that'd be? That's three passes. Up? Three passes. Yeah. So 1.6 wire. I've got 1.8 in the next roll. So yeah, she's it's it takes going. a while to get through it all, doesn't it? But it's going nowhere, that's gonna hold. <laughs> yeah. So how how many just one person, how many can you do in a day you reckon? Uh, and get at least half a dozen. Yeah, right, eh? But that setting up takes time. Yeah. Um, welding time is not a lot. Yeah. But and it'd be nice to get eight, but I haven't got there yet. Yeah, we've got to lift the tracks up and move it every so often, so that all takes time. Yep. So anyway, guys, that's that's what's happening here. Finally, it's been a few months. We've had the, the lugs that are sitting there ready to go, but um, it's good it's sort of wet. We can't use the dozer, so it's good to get this done. Just going to go through some of the gear he's using. This is the LN25 Pro. It takes 15 kilogram roll of wire. And the beauty of this one is it's a latch. I do not need to hold my finger on the trigger. I just press the trigger and let it go because these are 800 mil bars. So um, it's a long way to hold your finger. You just get a sore finger. So um, it's great to have the latch on it. So LN20, XLR8 wire, green wire from Hobart Brothers. And this is a Vantage 580. It's a multi-process power source. Gouging's the only one with full current to the process. Red is for wire feed, that's what I'm on. And blue is constant current for stick, and the gray is TIG. So you've got single phase and three phase power. 40 horsepower Perkins, maximum 1850 revs, so it's never screaming. Even though it's so strong, it's I don't mind working next door to it. Small welders all go 3600, rattle themselves a bit, a lot to run. This lucky to use 25 litres of diesel in a day. Cheap to own, cheap to run, does everything I want. Lincoln make great gear. Yeah, the old man's at it again. He's uh, tidying up a bit of the grass here. Be nice if you let us know that's what he was doing. Just had to move the uh, stiger out of the road just in case, but yeah, he's done a good job of tidying it up at least. Help keep the mice and rats at bay.
there guys the yeah, the reason we got tiny one uh, down here is yeah we had to move it from the other end of the, the farm here but we got silos going in over here we're just pushing up a pad nice and level dig it in a bit and then uh, often the cement pads will be 10 or 12 inches thick so you don't want a massive step on the end you want some step but not a massive step basically dark here but light towers are here and they work really well this fills it in all nicely so yeah we've got the other one over there and um yeah they're still going here so yeah no they certainly certainly make a difference righto we're at the lease block today i uh, just got a little bit of tidying up to do again we're just starting to dry out so we can actually get on the paddock um but yeah we're just doing a bit, little bit of work to the the boss planter just doing a bit of work to that, getting it ready. We're going to, um, they're talking ra more rain in another couple of days. So uh, this is the little patch that we're trying to get a bit of barley into. So we did so uh, 25 hectares, uh, but yeah, it got drowned out with the rain. So, which we knew was a possibility, but um, yeah. So we're just, what we're going to do now before this rain coming up, we're just going to um, yeah, tickle it in only about that deep. And that way, just so there's some sort of, soil over the top and then when it rains she'll she should pop up through fairly easy so yeah that's uh that's what we're might probably doing for the next couple of days here mucking around with a bit of that yeah so we do have a few piles left uh this one had just a bit of wire and um a bit of metal in it so we're just trying to clean that one up at least so we couldn't clear up all of the rock piles um in time so yeah there's just a few little small ones that we'll just plant around but at least we can get the sprayer over them and they were not interfering, so. Uh, but yeah, we just want to get this bit of metal out. Old Brad just informs me that there's uh, two snakes in here, so. There's one. So I'm not climbing in there. Yeah, good old stick flicked up and hit an airline, so. Got no air, but we don't need brakes where we're going. GPS stopped working on the tractor, so we think it's a receiver. So yeah, I just flew back up to the main farm and grabbed the uh, the spare one. And uh, yeah, the problem is these days is we don't uh, practice driving in a straight line ourselves, so we we struggle to keep it straight. <laughs> Drive as straight as the GPS. This is the receiver. Yes, yeah, so that receiver was actually screwed down onto that, but this one's um, got a big, big magnet under it. So just plug the board back in. We're just uh, ducking up to the shed to grab a strap and some D shackles. Yeah, then we're taking the dump truck to the development block. Uh, because we have a stuck D11. Uh, it's been a good probably seven weeks since we've got one of them bogs, so we're doing pretty well.
So, Phil, does this mean I'm no longer the king of getting stuck? Yeah, Fred, Fred, takes, Fred takes the cake for that. He's, he's taking the crown back, you reckon? Yeah. You're the runner up. Oh, right, I hope. Reckon he's going to get stuck again? <laughs> it's not really what these things are designed for, but they're so much quicker, even if you do get bogged. G'day guys, another morning here. I uh, yeah, didn't even get to spray anything and nozzle body was snapped off, so. Not quite sure when that happened, but anyway, I gotta swap all the nozzles and things over. And yeah, put this new one on and we should be going. So yeah, we just got, this is actually the first wheat we sowed this season. Yeah, it's looking really good. Yeah, what we're just putting a, um, a broadleaf spray down and a bit of a fungicide. The broadleaf spray obviously kills all the, the weeds in there that aren't grass. Um, so wheat, barley and all those things are, are grass. Um, and you've got your your wild turnip here. You've got those thistles down here. Um, and a few of those bits and pieces that are scattered through the paddock. They're a broadleaf, so the chemical will kill them, but not the wheat. And the fungicide is, yeah, just to, as the name would suggest, kill and stop any fungus from uh, from growing on the wheat plant. So, um, yeah, that's what we're doing today here. I've got about two loads to do. I think it's about a hundred and a bit over 180 hectares. Uh, we've got Phil down at the leaf block. He should be finishing up the planting there. So yeah, we'll get into it. So you can see here, see a few broadleafs in the wheat there. So that's what we're trying to get. You can even see some small ones. So you want to get onto this before the wheat gets too big and uh, and then you can't see any of them. So, but uh, yeah, no, the chemical will still get down in there and kill them all right. Yeah, so finished up here on the sprayer that might be it for the video yeah just remember if you haven't already just hit the like and subscribe button and uh yeah we'll catch you in the next one <laughs>